Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. Got some 308 Winchester to check out today. This is from Hornady or Hornaday, however you want to say it. Their Superformance line, 80933, a 150 grain SST. For our 308 Winchester testing, we have three barrel lengths available to us, a 12 and a half inch, a 16 and 22. We have our Procono Digital as always. It's about 40 degrees outside today, right at the end of the season that I like to do velocity testings because it gets too cold and then people start complaining about the numbers, yada yada. This ammunition was actually donated by a viewer. Thank you, Josh, for donating this ammunition. The box claims 3,000 feet per second. I wonder if that's out of a 24 inch barrel. Maybe we'll see that out of the 22. This line typically has good velocity numbers out of it. The SST is known for its good expansion and fragmentation when we've tested this in the 6.5 Grendel and the 7.62x39. So we will test this in gel as well as accuracy. Let's get into this testing. First, we'll grab our 12 and a half inch barrel. This is a Palmetto State Armory PA Gen 2 SBR. We have the JMAC Customs LAF 30 up front, still rocking that for testing. We have the PSA flat face single stage trigger there. So far, this is probably one of my more favorite builds just because 308 is so awesome and there's a lot of fire coming out of the end of this barrel. Hopefully the muzzle brake won't smack around the laptop lid too badly. 2564 2578 2569 2549 2549 2544 Well that's kind of one way to beat all the dust out of my rug with that muzzle brake. And now our 16 inch barrel. As you can see this is not our CZ 557. I actually located a 16 inch upper and figured for the sake of a little bit of speed while doing the velocity testing we'd use a carbine. This is a Palmetto State Armory PA Gen 2, has a stainless steel 1 in 10 twist barrel. They were on sale the other day I think blemished out for $2.99. Not bad for a 308 upper. We have a Yankee Hill 3 port QD muzzle brake up front. Trijicon MRO on here. 2749. 2754. 2756. Got some jam there. Didn't throw that piece of brass out all the way. Dinged up my other brass. These are the first shots through this gun. Or upper, I should say. Such. Twenty-seven thirty-two again. Twenty-seven fifteen. Twenty-seven forty-nine. And now our twenty-two inch barrel. This is our TC Compass. This has a one in twelve twist barrel. This has the five round rotary magazines that I can only ever get about four rounds into. The fifth round is near impossible. And if you do get the five rounds in there, they will not go in on a closed bolt. Twenty-eight seventy-three. 
2872. Looks like we're going to fall short of their 3,000 feet per second, although it is about 40 degrees outside, so if you add another 40 degrees, you can pick up about 2950 out of the 22 inch here, so that's close. Sixty-one. Twenty-eight sixty-seven. Twenty-eight sixty-one again. Twenty-eight sixty-one. Twenty-eight sixty-one again. Not bad. Our standard deviation across all three barrel lengths was eleven and twelve. That's pretty good. Here's our Hornady 150 grain SST Superformance. This is at 100 yards with our CZ 557 that has a one in ten twist barrel, a four to sixteen power. Vortex optic on there, 1.43 inches. I've definitely shot better, although with the 150 grain and that 1 in 10 twist barrel, I seem to get about the same. I have three of them that are in a really good spot, and then two of them seem to walk away from me a little bit. I do have a limited amount of this ammunition. This is probably the best of the two groups. The first one was a similar grouping. I had three there and then two down there. So we'll go to the 22 inch barrel and see if that one does any better with the one in 12 twist. Here's our TC compass at approximately 100 yards. We have a three to nine power Redfield revolution on there. 1.14 inches, not bad. I'll take a second string to see maybe if we can remove this guy here and get a little bit tighter. But it seems like the one in 12 twist like the 150 grain over the 16 inch with the 1 in 10 twist starting to get dark out here though, but I can still see the target pretty good Our second group was 1.61 inches looks like this one got away from me While we have the opportunity we'll test all three barrel lengths in our clear ballistics gel We have a 6 by 6 by 16 block at about 15 feet. We have a couple backup blocks We'll start with the 12 and a half inch and then we'll go check out the block after each shot because we should see some expansion and fragmentation with these rounds so with rifle rounds you get a lot of wound tracks going on in the block and you can't usually get three to four shots in a block like you can with pistol rounds Velocity 25 25. And it knocked everything I had down there off the table. Well, it's a good thing I put that backup block there. There is our first block. Our neck, let me get this right where I want it. Our neck is right around four inches good amount of disruption there you can see some of that plastic tip there we exceed the 16 inches of the block and all the way to right around the 30 inch mark there is our projectile <laughs> amazing give me a second and we'll dig that out Pretty much though, it settles down right around the 20 inch mark. Wow. Should be able to get a second shot in this first block before we have to change them out. There is our recovered round. We do have some expansion and a little bit of fragmentation going on there. I imagine once we step up to the 16 inch, we should see 
less penetration and less of this bullet when we recover it. Okay, now our 16 inch. Any takers on max penetration? Drop a comment below. We did turn the block around. We should be able to get two shots out of one block with this. Hopefully. Velocity 27, 26. You might not be able to see that too well because of the angle with the block jumped and is now this way. This wound track right in the foreground is our 16 inch. You can see there is a much, much shorter neck, almost maybe an inch. You can see that little tip right there. And we have then fragmentation starting around the three to four inch mark. We have some lead right there around the six inch. Pretty impressive wound track, just like the 12 and a half inch. Kind of hard to see because they both kind of intersect each other right there but the bottom one there is the 16 inch we exceed the 16 inches of the block we keep going keep going there's our little guy right there right around the 22 inch mark so right around seven inches less penetration i can see more of the bullet is expanded there give us a second we'll drag that out our bullet is definitely getting shorter and getting fatter. That's some pretty good expansion. I wonder if with the 22 inch, if we'll see just 16 inches of penetration. And now the 22 inch barrel. Again, place your bets in the comments below. Velocity 28. 24 and that gel block is standing straight up that's what almost 3,000 foot-pounds of energy will do for you Very, very, very short neck, just right around an inch. This is a fresh block. All of that damage you see is from the 22 inch. Quite a bit of fragmentation going on everywhere. Starting right around the two inch mark, you can see little bits of the jacket there and lead. That little polymer tip is scattered throughout there. There's some lead fragments right around the seven inch. And there's a little one that shoots up there. Come down here towards the end of the block. We see some more jacket fragments right around the 14 inch mark. The bullet passes the 16 inch mark there. And right around the 21 inch mark is our bullet. Impressive. There are marching orders. There is the 12 and a half inch, the 16 and 22. It looks like the 16 and 22 have about the same expansion threshold and then most of the 22 threw a lot of the lead off of it we'll definitely get the still macro photos with the final measurements and weights on these guys but very impressive Well, Josh, that hot rod graphic on the front of that box certainly lives up to its name. Over 2,800 feet per second in cooler weather. Probably could see maybe 2,900 feet per second, 
maybe in the 75 to 80 degree range. They do rate this at 3,000 feet per second on the box. Not sure if that's from a 24 or 26 inch barrel, but those numbers are pretty good. Our accuracy was okay for what we've seen with 150 grains with my guns. We've seen better, but typically that's with the heavier, longer, more match oriented bullets. Our gel results were outstanding to say the least. We had good expansion even in the 12 and a half inch barrel and good penetration depth. So if you're going to engage a target with a longer barrel, that 12 and a half inch barrel equates to a few hundred yards down range. The SST bullet seems like a winner when it comes to expanding and fragmenting at a wide variety of velocities. This particular same bullet technology is used in the 7.62x39 loads that Hornady has and those perform as well. I'd like to thank Josh for sending out a few boxes of this to test, my Patreon supporters, and you all for watching. Does anybody know of any company that makes a hat that has cutouts for Ear Pro so that I can actually wear my hat the way it's supposed to without breaking the seal on the muffs? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, catch you at the range. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. Got some Hornady, or Hornaday, depending on how you want to say it. Superformance, no that bullet does not have headers and exhaust flowing out of it. 15 inch upper, you'll notice that this is not the CZ557. We picked up a 16 inch PSA PA Gen 2 that was blemished the other day for, for the I'd like to thank Josh for 